All right, so. So we're getting all of our stuff set up here for bike trip. This came just a few days ago. This is my new randoneering bag. This is the previous one here that I was using on the last bike tour that I went on. This is the Ruthworks uh, rando bag, I guess they call it. And it's made with the same kind of clipping system here that clips to the rack. So I really like that feature. So I had Ruthworks make another one, but just slightly smaller. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to keep my hands clear for my typical rides where I don't need to carry a lot. But I like this so much, I'm going to go ahead and take this bag on our next bike tour that we're going to be heading out on here soon. And uh, anyway, so that's, that's one thing I'm doing. The other thing we're doing is these are the tent poles that we have been using with our tent for quite a while. The tent's definitely getting old. Uh, and these are the tent poles we've been using for them, or with the tent. And the problem with these poles is the length. These are 18 inches long. So what I'm going to do today for our next bike tour is I'm going to create new tent poles that are shorter. And uh, I ordered all the parts to make new tent poles. And we're going to go through that real quick on how to make these. But what's, what we're going to be using is, and let me just show you a sample of the poles. So this is the old tent poles and this is the new tent poles. So they're going to be much shorter. And you're probably asking, well, why? Why do you need them shorter? Well, shorter is going to be a lot easier when these, when we pack down our tent poles at night and make them into a little, you know, bundle of poles. These poles are much shorter and they fit better in things like pannier bags or strapped onto racks, they're not as long, they can fit in a frame bag really easily. The 18 inch long poles are just a little long, they're a little difficult to deal with when you're trying to strap these onto a bicycle. So these are aluminum poles, these are aluminum poles, these are 14 inches long with, with the actual tip or the sleeve, the, the male female part here to slide these together. So we're going to make some tent poles today for our next bike trip. I'm going to show you how, to, how we're going to do that and uh, then we're going to pack up our bikes and just show you our new arrangement. Every time we do a bike tour, we try something different. So today we're going to try new tent poles. We're going to try a little bit different way of packing our bikes and uh, we'll see how it goes. The way this works is you're going to need a little shock cord to run through the poles and you're going to need some kind of a washer. I went to the hardware store and I had a little bit of a difficult time trying to find a washer that was exactly the size of this. So these nuts, these are uh, number four nuts, they actually will fit inside the pole. And you need that because you need something to tie off the end of the string that can then slide down into the end of this so that the string, the shock cord, will stay inside. I have one pole that's going to be in the middle that does not have a sleeve on either side. And that's so that you can have, that's so you can flip the poles. You need one in order to be able to flip the direction of the poles. And the reason you want to flip them is because on the end, this end is what the tent feature, the tent uh, ring and pin, I think is what it's called, goes inside this end. So you need to have that open. And uh, Miss Cools is going to be running this new frame bag this time. This is going to be something slightly different for her. You're going to try to go more back bike packing style then, aren't you? Is that kind of your new approach? I think so. Yeah, I think that's what we're going for. Bike packing? Bike packing. Yeah. And why is that? You want to get away from all the racks and stuff and panniers? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, just yeah, trying to take away the weight of the racks and just strap it onto my bike. So strap you're running directly onto my bike. So what's your full setup gonna look like? Um it's gonna be just like it is right now, except I will add a larger rear saddlebag and strap things to the fork. Alright, so I got the cord all the way through all the sections and now I need a little washer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out, hold this with the vice grips and drill these out a little bit. It's a little too small. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, just tie, I guess I'm just going to tie a knot in here. The knot's going to fall somewhere in here, so we have to kind of stretch this out. So let me go like here. So that, you know, now I can feel there's some tension. But the nut's going to go, when I tie it onto here, it's going to slide all the way into there. Is that a good place? Yeah, pull it tight. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's good. Then let's go ahead and burn burn the end. Rowl. Okay, now uh, we, let, we let go. Ooh. Done. Wow. There's your tent poles. Now let's see if it'll... See, now you can collapse them. How cool is that? That is cool. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, they're, this is nicer. This is a little bit shorter. Wow, you did it. I am impressed. So we have this tiny hose clamp and this tiny king cage. Yeah. Now I know people have attached king cages with these, but I'm having a hard time picturing yeah, it's a little odd, how this it? is going to work. Yeah, I think what we could do is a couple things. Well, first of all, let's show what we're trying to do here. So we're trying to mount this anything cage to the fork and we have one eyelet here. So that's reserved for the top. Now we just need to clamp this bottom part to the fork. Show, grab those other, what are yeah. those other clamps we have? So that's the hose clamp idea. That might work. Okay, on to option two. Yeah, this is the other thought here. Well, this might work. This. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So this would go around here. Yeah. Yep. I think. Go this. down lower because it's going to be down, down on the okay. thinner part. And it's thinner down here. Okay. Yeah. So right there, that could do it. That could be it. Ooh. So what if we do it like that? Squeeze it and then run the screw through the clamp and here simultaneously. In fact, wouldn't it be great if we yeah. clamped it just like that? Oh, those are the better ones. We Look don't need that. these. These are, we don't need these. Look at that. This on. I'm clamping the wire a little, um, but let's just try it and see how it looks. I can't believe it was so easy and so secure. Man, I'm jealous. Your bike is going to be so light. <laughs> wow, I actually this made you jealous. I actually accomplished yeah. something that made you jealous. This is interesting that we're able to get these bikes set up now and save so much more weight by just getting rid of all the racks and all the... You know, it's interesting yeah. how much weight you save. I wouldn't have expected it to feel that light. Yeah, didn't we look at an old Renaers? photo and he had things strapped right to yeah. the fork That's how without they used the to do it yeah back in the old days there were no <sighs> special panniers and racks and stuff we sure like to complicate things don't we yeah all right well the bike is set up now and i was able to get this stuff mounted to just the front rando rack and i think this is a really nice setup so there's no really i don't have any uh, low rider racks here i don't have a Anything cage, nothing. This is literally strapped to the really wide rando rack and it's very secure, so I'm, I'm liking that.